Hello Elites and welcome back to Minecraft Elite vs. Wall. This is episode 133 and in this episode I am up here in this office building on the, uh, what is it, 5th or 6th floor probably? It's not even that tall of a building. It's just, it's because it's underground, oh not underground, but underneath this platform that we've built over this factory's district of the city. This old factory's district and now it's just a reused district basically. So that's that little building right there. Um. We will be building over here today. As you can see, this platform is now floating. Let's first let's kill these zombies and things down here because these things are annoying. Get out of the way. Get out of here. You zombie over there. <gasps> Snipe shot. And then you skeleton. Skeleton. Kill you. Alright, you're dead. Now, we we'll collect their crap and their experience. I say they're crap because they pooped their pants because of how terrifying I am. But anyways, as you can see, we made this whole platform levitate now with uh, flotation devices that Mr. Uh, that oh so wonderful Dr. Crimson has created for us. He has discovered a new invention, and this invention is beautiful because it throws us into the future, into the sci-fi future that everyone's been expecting. So we're gonna start by building a stall. As you can see by the title of this episode, we're gonna be building market stalls. So this is the center. So let's mark the center and go up. Steps. I'm imagining these crappy little stalls that don't have a lot of quality to them, but still sell a lot of shit. Still make their money. And the shopkeepers don't give a fuck about like, oh, I can invest money back into my stall and make it look even better. But you know, why do that when if it's perfectly fine, it doesn't need to look like a gold crusted fucking stall. It could just be a, a regular old stall. But you can make so much money. So I'm thinking a lot of them are going to sell a lot of the same things, which is pretty much around every kind of thing there is. But for different prices, competitive prices, some will be specialty. And, um, you know, some, if you, if you know, some, if you're, some, if you're a random person in the city and you know that one person out of the all, out of the whole entire market area, you know that one person specifically because you just, you know them. You can get a hookup from them rather than the other people, you know? So it's just a good place to come for under the table, um, non-tax sales, you know? And the city knows about it, but they're not gonna do shit. Just like most cities, most cities don't really do too much. They're just like, oh, it's fine, you know, just let it be. We'll take it down one day when it gets out of, out of hand, you know? It doesn't mess with the city's income, it actually helps a little bit, not really, but, you know. Alright. And go this, and then this over here, and that makes it a little brighter down here, so that way, you know, there's not so much, like, not so much darkness and mobs aren't spawning, because you can get mugged down here very easily. That's why there's a protective fence around here, because everything that's in the light, in the sunlight, that's being protected from <laughs> the ghettos under here, which is producing mobs like crazy, as you can tell by the beginning of this episode. <laughs> But once we have all these market stalls and light spread out perfectly even, th that will be not be a problem anymore. That'll be a problem of the past. Maybe one or two mobs, but that's okay. Because I have uh, mob griefing mob griefing off, and if I ever play in survival, I'm still gonna have mob griefing off, and I'm also gonna have uh, keep inventory, which might seem lame to some people. But hey, it's better to keep your inventory, especially when you got expensive stuff that is useful. You know. So, um, let's see. So for this stall, imagining this stall sells a little bit of everything. This is one of those stalls. Um, so let's see. Uh, there. there. Let's just do it every left one. And then we'll do this one every right one. I know these look like wash machines a little bit in this texture pack. But just imagine for this um, purpose, it looks like a container, like a... Like a like a f futuristic, like a near future, like, um, cabinet of some sort. You know what I'm saying? A little bit more chromey and, like, futuristic, like. There we go. And then we're going to put a chest in the floor, which I know that's kind of a taboo with, like, building. Well, for me. That's, like, an ugly thing to do, which is throw it into the ground because, you know, it just looks like that. But I do do it a lot, so I kind of break my own... <laughs> rules my own pet peeves it's okay it's okay it looks fine um let's see let's put an anvil down somewhere 
for them. Let's make this just really crowded. We want it small and crowded. Because that's how most stalls feel anyway. Then we're going to add water to this. They, they sell drinks also. They sell drinks. They repair items. They, they make tags for people. They, uh, all kinds of stuff, you know? They cook your food. That's why I put furnaces up there. They can cook food for you and make you food. Um, like, you, like, you know how you, when you go to Elitch's, for those of you who live in Colorado, when you go to Elitch's downtown, um, you know how you can buy those tur giant ass turkey legs? This is what this vendor will sell. He'll sell giant ass turkey legs. Stuff like that, you know? If you're hungry and you just, you know, mm, I don't want to cook so much dinner tonight. I just want to cook a little snack at home. But I'm also going to have some snacking here, so that way I don't have to make as much when I get home. So I'm going to have a giant ass turkey leg, you know? Right now at 2 p.m., and then when I get home at 5 p.m., I won't be as hungry. You know? After a long day of shopping and, and being out of the city. Being out in the city, that is. Alright. This is looking nice. I like it. I like it. It's pretty cool. It's cute. It's tiny. Uh, let's add a guy. And of course I can't because freaking Xbox 360. Ugh. I think they have a limit of like 30, I think. I tried it once. I think I tried it once back when like the city was still in its early days back in like episode 30 and something like that. I literally tried it. I think there's like 36 people you can spawn. I'm not sure. One of you guys probably knows how much it is exactly. But me, I can't seem to find where I spawned everybody. So I can't really find them to kill them and then be able to spawn more. So whenever I make cinematics, it's kind of hard because I gotta go fly around the city, look in each building for a freaking villager, and then kill them. Like, it's just terrible. It's miserable. It's hard. It really is. To look for a freaking villager to kill them, just so I can spawn another one in another part of the world. So let's make another stall here. And like, I, these designs are coming out of my head. Um, just out of nowhere. I'm, really, I'm literally making these up. I don't even have a reference picture to the side. My phone is off. My phone is next to me, but it's off. So this is literally just out of my head. So we're going to make um, acacia wood blocks, and we're going to go up three. Hmm, let's see, let's see. I imagine this one to have like a back wall and then have like a roof coming out like this. Like one of those just ugly wooden stalls that should not exist. It's like, why is it so ugly? It's an eyesore. I just want to, I just want to burn it down or something. Like, you know, it's just terrible. It's like one of those, again, referencing Elitch's, they have those stalls where you can like, throw the darts to pop the balloons or like the stalls to like squirt the gun and like get a prize or something like that something stupid it's just like that you know it's one of those crappy little stalls that someone works in for like 12 hours a day barely gets paid a lot and hates their job and then decides to want to quit but they can't find another place because no other place will take them <laughs> sorry george from work <laughs> sorry <laughs> he's probably he, he's salty because i you know i tried getting him an interview at my job they didn't take him. I'm like, what? So, I don't know. I feel bad for him, but then I also, I'm also kind of, like, making fun of him. I'm like, damn, they won't hire a little kid. <laughs> He's only, like, one one year younger than me. I'm not sure. Oh, this is a problem. So, let's go ahead and add a slab, and that looks a little bit better. Let's just make this thing dinky as hell. Like, it's just going to look like crap. <laughs> but it's temporary, you know? Um, It may not be here forever. We can tear it down in the future and build another thing. Um, but for now, we're gonna fill up the city like this. Alright. There's this. Nobody can jump into this, right? Good. That's the thing I'm looking for, is nobody is able to jump into it, because you don't want to be able to have people jump over your counter and beat your ass if you give them a terrible ass part. Ooh. Hello. Oh, yeah. This is, this used to be the, um, uh, the bomb shelter. But instead, it was a tornado shelter from Dr. Crimson's machine. Alright. Actually, we can use this. Let's let's give a story to this, guys. You, this is why I love building my city, and this is why I'm gonna love even more building it once the whole city is full and there's like no more space, and I keep finding a little nooks and crannies like this from the past. Um, and I start just changing them and building them to something else. Let's give it a story. This is gonna be even more fun. So we're just gonna throw in some chests in here. We're gonna make a little bit of a storage kind of, and a little bit of like a back room, quote unquote, an underground back room. Um, where he can like, you know, oh, okay, you want some sausages? Okay, let me go down there and go cook some. 
but I'll be right back. Opens the little flap, goes down, hooks it, and comes back up. So let's go ahead and grab some stone. Well, let's grab a trap door first. Trap doors are over here, and then flap. Wait, boop, boop. <laughs> there you go. And then we'll add the stone block to cover that up. Now, the customers won't know about it. They'll probably see them go down, but the vendor will know about it. And that's pretty freaking cool. So let's add this here. It's okay if you can kind of, you can't really see into there anyway. That's fine. Now let's make this upstairs crowded. Let's add a, a drink station with drinks. Let's see, let's add it to the side there. And then let's add, mm, let's add the furnace. Furnace, I guess, will be down here. This is what I mean, but he'll come down here and cook sausages with you know, there you go, he's got three Martha Stewart brand ovens. <laughs> if she even has a brand, does she have a brand? I'm not sure. So there we go. Um, and then we'll give him a water source so he can uh, keep refilling the drinks. And then, you know, whatever. Uh, so there's storage for his supplies. And then a light here, because it's kind of dark. These were abandoned for a long time. We gotta clean out the cobwebs. Webs from all the spiders, catching things and eating their insides. <laughs> 100 points if you know where that's from. Right? Alright, so go ahead and uh, grab it. these washer machine looking things. They're not really very washer machines. Um, let's pop a hole in this wall. Ooh, another room. Damn, we gotta do like an underground tunnel system with these leftover rooms and make it for all the vendors to like come down here and trade things. And Oh, this is going to be so fun, guys. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm getting excited now. Anyways, guys, that's it for this episode. I have no time left. I got to go to sleep. <laughs> Leave a like if you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe today to come to Lee and not miss out on any of the for or uploads. Subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you in the next episode that I create. And so, goodbye, elites. Goodbye.